welcome to this, the third episode of Fort Collins Before. As you remember from our last episode, we were talking about the relationship between the Plains Indians and the people that were heading west. In this episode, we're going to talk about some of the reasons that those people were heading west. Now, as you might remember, some of the reasons that people headed west were for gold, for land, and other things like that. But did you know that one of the first things that people headed west for were beaver? Yes, beaver, and you see a beaver dam right behind me. Now, why would people be heading here for beaver than to trap beaver? Well, that's what we're going to find out as we look at Fort Collins before. Beaver fur is valued for a number of different reasons. Uh, one is that it's waterproof. Beaver actually produce an oil called castoreum, which you might be familiar with as castor oil. And their claws act almost like combs. They take the soil and comb it through their fur, and the coating of the castoreum over the fur creates uh, the waterproofness that is a characteristic that people particularly value in beaver fur. It's also very thick and there's a soft underlayer to the fur uh, that can be used to make felt. So starting in the 15 and 1600s in countries in Europe, people began hunting the beaver to use this waterproof, thick fur to create top hats. And these top hats were so popular that the people in Europe hunted the beaver almost to extinction. Uh, in order to keep making these hats that were so popular, the European countries needed to find new places to hunt beaver. And of course, one of those places was the North American continent. And so Spanish people, Dutch people, French people, English, came to this continent and began exploring from the east, moving west, looking for places they could hunt beaver. So it sounds like you're saying that there were beaver here in the Fort Collins area. There were. Um, of course, beaver live on land, but also in water. They're attracted to areas that we call riparian zones, so alongside Banks of creeks is where they like to live and they build dams in order to create what we call beaver ponds and in the ponds they'll build the den that they live in. Uh, over time, as the beaver abandon the den and the dam falls apart, the area that had once been the beaver pond becomes what we call a beaver meadow, which has a wonderful rich soil in it. Um, of course, the beaver, when they're creating their dams and creating their dens, um, are helping to control the population of trees, they're helping to control the flow of water through an area, and then when they leave, and all the soil that's collected at the bottom of their pond dries into uh, the beaver meadow, then you've got an area that has really lush grasses and flowers in it. So uh, they were here and they were living along the creeks and streams of the Poudre River and some of its little tributaries. So they were living area. both on the plains and in the mountains up above Fort Collins? As long as there's water, that's where they're going to be. Okay. Um, Are there still beavers in the area? There's still beaver in the area, of course. Today, <laughs> they still cause problems um, in building their dams and building their dens, um, creating these ponds in places that people don't necessarily want them. Uh, they're also known to build in ditches that are draining storm water for us. Uh, so we have to watch where the beaver are living. Um, there's some compromise involved in, in beavers and, and humans living peaceably today. Right. Um, there was a time though in the 1800s that uh, we doubted that the beaver would survive into the uh, 1900s and even into today uh, because the hats were just so popular and because the beaver was hunted to almost extinction in Europe, the trappers that came here to North America and began moving westward across the continent did the same thing. States um, in the eastern part of uh, the United States of America found themselves uh, with extinct beaver populations. Um, so they kept moving further west Yeah, to find as more you kill off beaver the beaver pelt. moving west. Mm -hmm. In fact, the beaver is probably the reason for the Louisiana Purchase. 
This area of land here in, in the West where we live uh, was purchased by Thomas Jefferson, our president, in the year 1803 from France for $15 million. And Thomas Jefferson really wanted to buy this land because so much of the beaver trade, the beaver fur trade, was happening on this land and he wanted that trade to benefit the United States directly. He wanted all of this economy that was happening, the buying and selling, to benefit his country. So he made the Louisiana Purchase and explorers began coming to this area and that's when they identified that yes, there are beaver here on these riparian zones along the waterways. And so this was a new source for the fur to make those hats. Okay, and you said riparian means along the waterways yes. where there are streams and creeks mm -hmm. and ponds, yes. lakes, okay. So, th so this, these, the beaver fur, it was made directly into hats like this then? Yeah, they would cut this soft under fur from the beaver and it has little barbs on it uh, that when you rub the fur together, it will catch on itself and makes it a very strong material, which we call felt. So the hat, which is made from this soft under fur, is strong, it's sticking to itself, but because of that layer of the castoreum that's on it as well, it's waterproof. Mm, okay. So you can imagine men in the 1800s really liking to wear their fancy beaver felt hats because if it rained, they would stay dry. Stay. This looks kind of like the hat that people always imagine Abraham Lincoln. I having. imagine his probably was a beaver pelt hat. Did they wear these mostly in the winter? because of the wet weather? Then? Yes, um, but it's also a fashion, so I think it was kind of year round that they were mm -hmm. wearing this. Okay. Um, now the people who were hunting the beaver were hunting during specific parts of the year. You want to hunt the beaver when its fur is at its healthiest and thickest. So probably during the winter months. Yes, when it's warmest. Okay. And then in the summertime, the people who hunted the beaver would bring their pelts out onto the plains and meet up with people from fur companies. What we have are mountain men who live in the mountains during the winter and trap the beaver. And then we have people who own the fur companies. They buy the pelts from the mountain men directly or they trade the pelts in exchange for goods that the mountain men need. The mountain men need to feed themselves. They sometimes actually sell for money, uh, for food, for clothing, for any supplies or tools they may need to get their job done over the winter. They will trade the pelts they've trapped in exchange for the goods they need. So they were out there during the bitter cold in the winter, yes. living in the mountains. Yes. And hunting beaver, and hunting trapping beaver. beaver. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, weren't, were the Native Americans also yes. trapping beaver? The Native Americans did as well. In fact, uh, some Native Americans call the beaver the, the little Indian because they felt that uh, beaver actually communicated with one another. They have a little chatter. Um, and so they felt these were little people talking. So they had great respect and um, great affection for the beaver, but they did trap them. In fact, the Native Americans taught many mountain men new skills and new tools to use in the fur trap uh, trade that they were doing. That's great. So when did these mountain men, these fur trappers, come out to the Fort Collins area? Well, we think the first group of trappers may have come here in the early 1820s, but we do think that it was a group of trappers that gave our river its name, Cache the Poudre River. We think some trappers, possibly as early as the 1820s or into the 1830s, had come through this area looking for beaver and got caught in a snowstorm and hid or cached their gunpowder and other goods in the ground where it would stay dry. And so our river is named Hide the Powder or Cache the Cooter, and it's probably from a group of fur trappers here exploring. But it, it has a French name, and why would that be the case? Well, even though Thomas Jefferson bought this land for the United States, the people who were out here came from all different countries. We had the Native Americans, of course, who had been here for thousands of years. We had Dutch people, we had French people, we had Spanish-speaking people. And so these were the people actually living out here and doing this work. They were a mix of different countries, um, different nationalities. So the, the French, when they came through, left a lot of names of places in the French language, the Cache-la-Poudre River being just one of them. 
Americans. If you came out here then in the 1830s or 1840s when these people were out here and you were out here trapping for beaver, you probably, I suppose, would have heard a lot of different accents and languages being spoken. Absolutely, a lot of different languages, um, but everybody had some of the same ideas about the fur trade, um, the exchange of goods. For example, Native Americans do beautiful beadwork with glass beads that came from Italy, but they didn't get them until they began trading those beads in exchange for furs okay. that they trapped. Where did they trade? Well, they would meet at designated locations. Some of those locations are on the Platte River, just a little east of where we live today, and they were forts made with adobe walls, um, not forts where the military what was. Is, what is adobe? Sorry oh, adobe is a brick made out of mud from a river, packed into a mold with some straw, maybe some small pebbles or stones, mm -hmm. and allowed to harden naturally by the sun, almost like the sun bakes this clay and mud from the river, bakes it hard. Um, and it is a style of brick that comes from the south of this continent and into Central America. It's often associated with Hispanic peoples. So we have uh, these forts that were built on the Platte River by people who were from France, who were from New Mexico or Mexico, uh, people who were American, who would come out here, build these forts on the river. They weren't for army soldiers, they were for Native Americans, trappers and traders, the mountain men, an area where people could come and safely trade their beaver pelts for other goods they needed. Like I said, the Native Americans often traded for uh, blankets, they traded for mirrors, they traded for iron, other metal. Um, the mountain men for tools that they needed. Uh, they might trade for blankets that the Native Americans made. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just a, a place where people could meet and trade the goods that they These had. These were just trading forts then, they weren't military forts. Right. Um, Fort Lupton, Fort St. Vrain. Yes. Fort Jackson okay. uh, is here, and uh, Luis Vasquez created a fort that oh, they okay. named Fort Vasquez. Fort Vasquez, right. A lot of these people also had relationships with um, Bent's Fort, which mm -hmm. is in the southern part of our state. And for example, one of the Bent brothers was involved in the building of our fur forts along the Platte River. We like to say there were four fur forts on so, the Platte River. <laughs> so these were businessmen, basically, yes, they who were, were interested in buying furs yes. and trading goods with both the Native Americans and with the fur trappers in right. the area. Okay. A lot of these men who were from uh, European or American origin uh, felt very strongly there was an opportunity to create a new culture of people here in Colorado. Uh, they married Native American women, they had children together, families, um, and a lot of these men thought that by creating families with the Native Americans that they would create a whole new culture of people that would respect both heritages and languages and economies and start a whole new group of people on this land. Um, it was I one suppose... way to maintain peace and, and harmony was to be family. Right, right. So the mountain men were really men. Yes. There weren't mountain women there, uh, that were coming out to hurt, <laughs> look for, for beaver pelts. There's the occasional story of a woman that made it out here um, either with the beaver fur industry or perhaps with gold, but this time frame, we're really talking single men who are what we would call individualistic. They're, they're very much um, loners. They like being by themselves. They're very independent. They don't like necessarily being in the east part of this continent. They probably where felt it was too crowded. Oh, absolutely. It's crowded. They don't like um, the standards that society sets for them. Um, they're being told how to behave and what to wear and what to do. These are people that don't do that. I want to go out, explore. I want to see things. I want to do on my own. And so these are people that are really taking opportunity, doing their own thing and, and removing themselves from a society that um, was not where they were happy. Right, okay. What happened to them? Well, a couple of different things. Um, the first thing to know is that the value for beaver fur 
dropped, it went away in about the year 1840. We know that we people like to change our fashions and almost every year you see a new fashion. Well, that happened to beaver felt hats. They were all the rage for three or four hundred years and then in the year 1840, suddenly you could get silk top hats from China. Well, who wants a beaver fur hat when you can have a silk hat? So people stopped buying the beaver fur. Okay. These men had to find a new way to survive. One of the things they did was begin hunting buffalo. So that gets us into a new era here on the plains. Instead of the men out trapping the beaver, they're starting to hunt buffalo instead. Another thing that happened to the men is that they began prospecting, looking for gold. Some of them were doing that already when they were in this part of the world, but the gold rush started in the year 1849 to California, and then there was another rush in uh, 1859, and so uh, these people were involved in those rushes for gold. So they found other ways to make a living. Well, as we have just seen, the trappers that came through this area in the 1830s and 40s were after beaver pelts. And one of the things that was created out of these beaver pelts were hats like this one. This is an original from the Fort Collins Museum that they have lent us. And you can see it is made of beaver felt fur. Now, not only trappers came through this area, but also settlers for a variety of reasons, for gold, for land, for farming, and in our next episode, we're going to look at some of those people and how those settlers grew up Fort Collins. So join us next time for another episode of Fort Collins Before.